Hi everyone and welcome back to another video and this is going to be a very special video the long requested game room tour. So folks have been asking me for a long time especially folks over on my twitch page to do a game room tour and that's exactly what I'm going to do today. So we're going to walk around I'll show you everything in detail and uh, just give you a sense of what I have in each collection how I've decorated the room and overall, uh, kind of what my tastes as a gamer and game collector are. Uh, a little context, I have been collecting games for uh, basically my entire life at this point, so I just really never got rid of anything. So what you're seeing is uh, essentially a lifetime worth of picking up games that I like, games that I wanted to try, etc. I don't tend to go for full sets. Everything I own is either something I have memories with or something that I think I would enjoy, plan to stream, things like that. It's all all stuff that is meaningful to me in some way. So I've just been giving you kind of a broad panning shot here and then we're going to go very in depth. We'll start over here at the door, which is where folks tend to start when they enter the room, and we'll make our way all the way around. This is going to be a long one because, well, I like long game room tours and I want to show everything in depth, so Buckle up, you know, grab a nice beverage, maybe uh, have some kind of low effort game that you can grind at the same time, and we will go through everything. If you don't want to watch a super long game room tour, well, you can make it as long as you want it to by just ending it when you're done. So let us head on over to the start of the tour. All right, we are going to start at the beginning. So this is the door. Uh, here's the evidence. There's the door handle. <laughs> On the back of my door, uh, my niece and nephews have done a lot of either coloring from game stuff or done drawings that are game related because they're also very into games. And they give them to me for, you know, my birthday, Christmas, stuff like that. And so as they've done them, I've just always saved them, hung them up in the back of the door. I think it's a cool way to decorate this door with something personal. So you can see this awesome set of Pokemon colors. You can see this top 10 toad. So good. It's addressed to little Steve. Uh, my name my name is Steve and my family has a lot of Steves. So I a long time ago earned the nickname little Steve. So you'll see a lot of these addressed to little Steve. That is maybe the best Mario anyone has ever done. Standing on his warp pipe. Cool little paper craft. Mario and Luigi there. <laughs> this one is fun. When the PS5 was coming out, they knew I was very excited about it. So he uh, drew me a PS5 <laughs> with a little Santa hat that says PS5 Party. Because <laughs> it came out around around ish Christmas time. It wasn't exactly Christmas time. A little Xbox controller there. And another awesome Mario. They just keep getting better, right? You tell me. Which one, which one is, uh, is the best Mario? This one or this one? I know my answer, but, uh, you know, make your voice known in the comments. And then moving down, we have this Dark Souls 2 Scholar of the First Sin poster. This is something I've had here forever. I got this when the game was coming out. And down at the bottom, just one more poster. We have a Pokemon Alpha Sapphire Omega Ruby one. I don't even really remember getting that, but... It, like the Dark Souls poster, has been there forever. And then... Right here, moving around, we have, first off, the, the Sky art book by Yoshitaka Amano. And then this Pokemon Halloween Trick or Treat bag. I believe that this is from the late 90s, so... I think just a cool piece of decoration. I like to find stuff like this that is sort of unconventional decoration to put around the game room. So you'll see some other stuff like that from time to time. And then at the very bottom down here, we've got a nice Bunger plush. Uh, you'll find a lot of plush strewn throughout the game room. I, I like punctuating the shelves, punctuating the game room with plushes, memorabilia, stuff like that that just gives it a little bit of extra, a little bit of extra flair. And then here is a boxed 32X, which is sitting on top of the Summon Night 6 Lost Borders Special Edition. And that is the Vita version. And then we'll take a look at this bookshelf. So I'll zoom back for you. I think at this point it's probably worth mentioning. I know a lot of people like a very clean, very crisp game room. 
I personally prefer the sort of organized clutter look. I like how much can you cram into one space and still, by whatever your definition, uh, looks, looks somewhat organized. And so that's the look I'm going for. I like the shelves to be nice and alphabetical and stuff like that, but I also like everywhere you look there to be something new and cool to see. So, up top, Ring Fit Adventure Box, Atari Jaguar Complete in Box, and my Samsung new one. I need to do a little bit of repair on the new one, but happy to have one. Digimon Clock, because why not? I think I got that at a garage sale. Some miscellaneous consoles and console boxes. Complete in Box Gamecom, uh, an R Zone. My box for my Wii U and an N64 in the box. Up here, that back there is a, my Switch box. We've got the Tapwave Zodiac and the Xbox 360. <laughs> you know, just kind of whatever could fit, right? The miscellaneous things. Then we get into the first shelf. So back here is just a bunch of random jewel case CD games. I don't have too many of those. Most of those are from when I was growing up. And we got some... Donkey Kong Country stickers, little Mario Kart thing, and this is sort of just like a lot of miscellaneous plushes and, and figures from games that I really like. So I've got uh, some Tiger handhelds there, including the ones that I grew up with. I love Hollow Knight, so I have a Hollow Knight plush here, and the Grub plush there. Then we've got Sayonara Wild Hearts, a game I also really love that is like a commemorative pack of tarot cards. Some miscellaneous figures, you know, some Mother Slash Earthbound ones, Mario, Yoshi, my small collection of Klonoa merch that I have. There's, there's not a lot of Klonoa merch out there. There's still some I would like to get, but I really like Klonoa, so I collect what I can. We have a couple of figures. That back there is a keychain. And then this Klonoa plush. Uh, this is the larger of the two Klonoa plushes, the vintage ones. Very, very good plush. Very hard to come by. And then Fez. Little metal slime. I like that one because he's kind of like dripping over the edge. And then just a random Banjo-Kazooie coin and my boxed copy of StarCraft. As you can tell, whatever fits to make a decoration looks good. <laughs> Next shelf here we have Amiibo. Yeah, I uh, I did get into the Amiibo craze. I had ambitions of collecting all of the Smash Bros. Amiibo at one point, and those have since fallen off. So this is all of the Smash Amiibo, not counting the DLC characters. There are a ton more that I don't have for all the DLC characters. And then there's a ton of miscellaneous ones that I just never got, like the Monster Hunter ones, uh, Animal Crossing stuff, some Kirby ones. But this is the entire Smash Bros., original set and some miscellaneous ones too you know like shovel knight and and a kirby or two can't can't say no moving down to the next shelf we have my little sonic display shrine i like collecting sonic merch especially classic and vintage sonic sonic stuff i mean there's so many things you can collect for sonic so i try to be somewhat picky and so this is just some cool stuff that i've found over time you know, like a little hacky sack, a little fast food Happy Meal toy, really cool plush. This uh, this is a classic Sonic plush, but it's actually a more modern one. Came out eh, a couple of years ago, I think. You know, some pins, a neat lampshade, some of the more vintage plushes back there. So yeah, I like my little Sonic Nook. I'm always looking to add more stuff to it, but collecting Sonic merchandise can be tricky, we'll say. And then my one uh, Totaku figure, I think these are called. The Sony's answer to Amiibo. Uh, I just have a Knuckles there. And then a couple more Amiibo, the Splatoon ones littered all throughout. Crash Bandicoot, stuff like that. And behind there is a set of Dark Cloud trading cards. These came, I think, originally in a magazine. I, I love the original Dark Cloud, and there really is not a lot of merchandise for Dark Cloud. So I was happy to get this. It's in a frame that's like a little too big for it. I just haven't reframed it yet, but uh, I couldn't wait to put them on display, so I set them there. I think that they're awesome. And, you know, a little Dragon Warrior figure, stuff like that. Moving down to the next shelf. This is where I have some, but not all, of my strategy guides. 
These are usually either the ones that I got more recently or ones that I've thrifted. Sadly, I did not hang on to my strategy guides when I was younger. I wish I had. There's a lot of strategy guides I wish I could read from when I was a kid, especially a lot of the unauthorized ones. But I have tracked some of them back down. And I just love collecting strategy guides when I can. I think that the art in them is really cool and they just, you know, they take me back to a certain time in in gaming when not everything was ubiquitous online. So uh, this thing on top is actually pretty cool. This is a uh, The Last Guardian press kit. I should probably do a video on this at some point rather than open it up right now, but uh, this was distributed to the press at the release of Last Guardian, which is a game that I really, really love. I love all of the Ueda games. And then, you know, I can see some strategy guides. This is like a cool little lenticular Kirby Return to Dreamland bookmark. Woo -woo 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 -woo. I like that quite a bit. Then moving over, some miscellaneous figures, like a little keychain from the Link's Awakening remake that came out. Um, this PlayStation anniversary 20th or PlayStation 20th anniversary coin I got from a friend of mine who worked with someone whose like husband was a, a Sony merchandiser rep. So uh, just a cool little commemorative coin. You're gonna see a couple of these uh, Samus cardboard mini standees strewn throughout the game room, at least two of them. Uh, as we get deeper into the tour, that will make sense as to why there is a reason. Then I've got Little Big Planet 2 uh, uh, bookends that are just holding a couple of different special editions, Life is Strange and Guilty Gear, and then this Nathan Drake statue, which is probably the most common statue from the most common collector's edition ever. How many of you have this statue? I would be willing to bet at least 50% of you. And then moving down to the bottom here, we have uh, what I guess is like a Nintendo merchandise shelf. So you can see some of the plushes aren't really crammed in there too well, but this is a lot of my Mario plushes and Mario figures, things like that on this left side. I like collecting more vintage plush when I can. I think that they just have a, a charm to them. So you can see I have some of the Super Mario Kart plushes back there, some vintage Toads and BDNA stuff, the Mumbo. Uh, back there is like a cool little Samus action <laughs> figure. Weird looking, but very neat. And then some of the World N Nintendo stuff and various other little miscellaneous figures and stuff. Uh, so that is that bottom shelf there. And now let's move up and uh, we will start looking at some games, starting with Sega Genesis. All right, so Genesis. Well, before Genesis, we have our Zergling Starcrafts plush from the Starcrafts web series, very good web series. That's just like a Hearthstone box that a mug came in. The Genesis is the first system that I ever considered mine. So the first one in the house that was mine, previously I did have an NES, but it was my sister's. And But I opened up a Sega Genesis on Christmas uh, of 93, and ever since then that was sort of my first official system. And so I have a lot of nostalgia tied to it, a lot of memories, and there's just an incredible library of games on it too. As we go through, I'll pull out some of the ones that mean something to me, show those, but there's just not enough time for everything, so we're going to have to pick and choose. First off here, Aladdin. Great game. Played a ton of that as a kid. One of my most played. And then just scroll through here. I did have Batman Forever as a kid, so have mercy on me. A lot of good action games, even some good RPGs. Earthworm Jim, that's another one I had as a kid that I played a lot. Flicky. I used to play Flicky at my um, my cousin's house. They were much better at it than I was. Uh, if you've never played this, it's like a very cool platformer, kind of a single screen game. Vaguely similar to like Joust. You're trying to collect these birds and then get out of the level. A lot of fun. And a pretty good port on the on the Genesis. Gargoyles is one that I played a lot as a kid. Um, <laughs> James Pond, big fan of that, actually. Lion King, oh man, I, I played a ton of, I still play Lion King quite often. Yeah, just so many good games. 
We'll go down to the next shelf here. It's going to be hard to see back there. It's kind of dark because there's like the shelf makes a bit of a shadow, but Rye Star uh, may be my favorite Genesis game. Just really, really incredible game. Late Sega Genesis platformer, beautiful sprites, good music, tons of fun. Got the Shining Force game, Shinobi 3. So this copy of Sonic 2, you can see it's a little, a little rough. I always say, people ask, you know, if there's a fire in the game room and you can only save one game, what would it be? This would be the one, this copy of Sonic 2. This is the one that I opened Christmas of 93. It's the earliest game in the collection that I actually obtained myself. Um, and it's playing this that Christmas morning is the earliest gaming memory I have. So it's just really meaningful to me. I'm happy to still have this copy. I don't have all the original copies, especially all the original boxes of games that I had as a kid. Some of the boxes got lost over time and moves and stuff, but this is my original Sonic 2. Very, very happy to have that. Some other Sonic games, all very good. It has Escape from Mars, not a great game, but one that I am very nostalgic for. Another one I played a ton as a kid is Buster's Hidden Treasure. Funny enough, as a kid, I didn't realize that this was a Konami game. You know, I didn't have any sense for Konami making good games. I was just like, oh, I like Tiny Toons, and this is like a really fun platformer. Turns out, there's a reason for that. It's made by an incredibly talented developer. So, who would have known? <laughs> yeah, really great game, though. If you're looking for a, a platformer on Genesis, I'd highly recommend Buster's Hidden Treasure. Thunder Force. Some great shooters, you know, gosh. Thunder Force 3, Truxton, Troubleshooter. A good, good shoot 'em up system if you're into retro shoot 'em ups. Wings of War is another really good one. And I know some folks are going to ask, so I'll pull these out. These two are reproductions. This is like a Sailor Moon action type game. Actually pretty fun. And this is a reproduction of Monster World 4 before it had an English release that came to like the Switch and stuff. And I got these two. I usually don't get like reproductions of existing games, but I got these from a friend who was paring down his collection. And so they kind of are more, you know, I just appreciate the memory of him giving them to me. And they are good games, so why not, right? And then my one lonely Mega Drive game, which is uh, Magical Taruto kun Very good 2D platformer. Then we move on to my Master System collection. This is it. <laughs> this is the whole set. Uh, I don't have a huge Master System collection. It's a system I haven't done a lot of collecting for. I never had one as a kid, and um, I didn't really know about it until many years later. But there are a lot of cool games on it, so you know, the Alex Kidd games are just uh, a ton of fun, especially Alex Kidd and Shinobi World. Maybe maybe a little less Alex Kidd and High Tech World, but Shinobi World is very good. Golden Axe Warrior, this is a really great uh, game, very much in the style of Zelda. Golvelius, it's one that I still have yet to play, but I plan to. A very rough copy of Fantasy Star, but uh, a game that I think probably should be in every Master System collection, and then, you know... Some other good ones there, too. I'm very excited to stream some of these, especially like Zillion. I want to stream that. And now we'll move down to the Wii. So, first off, you, I mean, you can see this a little more with the Genesis, but I tried to, for the Wii, get this shelf to not be blocking too many of the games. And so there are games like Poor A Boy and His Blob that are kind of <laughs> supporting the rest of them. And then we get into my Wii collection. You know, the Wii has a reputation for just being shovelware, which I think is really unfair. Like, yes, there is a lot of shovelware, noise, junk, but that's true on any system that has a large library. Like, you know, look at the PS2. There's there's tons of amazing games, but there's also tons of shovelware on the PS2. So I sometimes I, I think that the Wii gets knocked a little more than it should. Because there's a lot of, of very fun stuff. I know that this is a very collectible game now, but uh, I actually had this game since it released. My friends and I used to play Dokapon Kingdom all the time. We'd have like weekly Dokapon Kingdom sessions. This game's a lot of fun. It's kind of like an RPG meets a board game. Um, good multiplayer. I, not, it's not the same genre, but it's sort of similar to like Fortune Street, if you're familiar with Fortune Street. 
And we've got, oh, yep, there's Fortune Street right there. Fragile Dreams, that's a really good game. Um, the reason that it doesn't have the Wii logo there is because this is the inverted, or the reversible cover. Now you've got horror stuff, you've got platformers, Kirby, Klonoa remake, all good stuff. Light gun stuff, I played a lot of, uh, well not a lot, but I played a pretty decent amount of Mario Kart Wii. Oh, the Metroid Prime Trilogy, phenomenal. Yeah, just tons of platformers, just... Like, there's always something new to discover on the Wii. I'm still finding stuff regularly that I had no idea existed on the Wii. So I highly recommend people check this system out. In terms of collecting it. And then moving back down, you see this time Super Monkey Ball is the hero that's holding up the collection. Then we get down here. Oh, the Galaxy games are both phenomenal. Um, we have... Oh, Trauma Center Second Opinion. So this isn't the only game I got, but I always associate this game with the launch of the Wii. Uh, for the Wii and for the 360, I got them on launch day. I waited out in line overnight at, in Best Buy's parking lot, you know, in the November cold from 10 p.m. till 8 a.m. to get my launch Wii. And no regrets. I Honestly, sometimes I really miss the uh, the sort of pageantry around system launches these days you don't get that you know now at the ps5 and the xbox series x there is you could argue there wasn't even a launch at all you just can't get a hold of it uh this is another one veggie world this is probably one of my better thrifting finds ever looks like nothing looks like a kid's game but it's actually a shoot 'em up it's like a fruit themed shoot 'em up now it's not a good shoot 'em up but it is a shoot 'em up and because of that uh, I think because of that, that's a pretty expensive Wii game. It's uh, You might be surprised if you looked that one up how much it goes for. And I got that for a couple dollars at a thrift store near where I work. Plus, you know, shoot 'em up collectors want it and full set collectors too. If you're going for a full set, you, you gotta get it. Then blocking my Wii games off here is Mario Kart Live Home Circuit. This is the, like the one randomly placed Switch game because it does not fit with my other Switch stuff. Uh, in terms of, like, going around this room in our counterclockwise rotation that we're doing, the Switch stuff is essentially the very last things we're going to look at, so stay tuned if you're a big Switch fan. we got Gengar, who is guarding the Wii U games. And then we got Wii U. I, I like the Wii U, you know? it's At this point, it's regarded as a failure, I think relative to Nintendo's other consoles. It's not like it's uh, a huge financial flop or anything, but I think the Wii U is a lot of fun. It's got a, sh a, a small library, but it packs some punches. Granted, a lot of it is now available on Switch, but I don't know. I like the feel of the Wii U. I like the Wii U gamepad. Uh, I actually think it feels pretty good. And uh, a, lot, a lot of fun stuff on here, you know? Who can argue with a system that has the greatest puzzle game ever, Captain Toad's Treasure Tracker? Those with taste will know. And then we'll move down to the very bottom shelf on this, which is just some miscellaneous things, an Oni Chinbara PS4 game for some reason, a little Matchbox car. And we have these. You'll see a lot of these throughout the game room. They're in a couple different spots. These are from a company called IndieQuest. No, not IndieQuest. IndieBox. Nice try. Tossing in a little plug for the podcast there. Uh, but Indie Box. So these are collector's editions of indie games that were released physically on PC. Back when this was still a relatively novel idea. This was years ago. Uh, during like the loot crate phase. And so I have a ton of these like indie games in PC boxes spread all throughout the room. And it's, uh, yeah, the Stanley Parable one's probably my favorite. They are very cool. Uh, I think that they are a lot of fun. And then we got Torchlight 2. And uh, there's one shelf here that we skipped past, but we'll jump up to it. Got some PC games. Uh, one of my coolest things in my collection is this copy of Super Meat Boy. It is signed by the developers. Uh, signed by both of them, which is really cool. 
It's the German version, but I do not care which version it is because I was just happy to get a signed copy of one of my favorite games of all time. I really love Super Meat Boy. Uh, back in the day, I was really excited when I found that there were physical versions of To the Moon and Gone Home. They've since been released on Switch, which is awesome. More people can play them. But those are the first physical versions I ever knew about. A couple more indie boxes. And we've got a couple special editions. The Odin Sphere Storybook Edition and the Persona 5 Take Your Heart Premium Edition. And then we move over to two small collections of mine. Move that up and around. First off, the 32X. <laughs> this is small, but you know, it's also 20% of the library of the 32X. Another system I had no idea existed back in the day, even though I was a Genesis kid. So uh, this is what I have. I have the games that I really wanted on it, and uh, there's still a couple I'd like to pick up. But all in all, just a really, really neat little add-on for the uh, Genesis slash Sega CD. And then here is my Xbox One collection. That one game that's missing there that's in the other room, that's Rock Band 4. That's easily the game I play the most on my Xbox One. You'll notice that this is pretty small because, if I'm being honest, uh, I played the PS4 much, much more than the Xbox One. And that's for a couple reasons, but PS4 was definitely my go-to for that generation. And Xbox One is one of my least played consoles of all time, so my library is pretty small. All right, so now I will bring you up and around here and we will take a look at the shelf around the corner. Before we do that, I should point out this shelf uh, that the Genesis games and the Wii games are on, that all these, that these systems sit on. This is actually a old display shelf from a Hollywood video or... It might have been a different rental. I think it was a Hollywood video, but I'm not remembering off the top of my head. But from a video rental store. And when they were going out of business, I saw that they were giving away these shelves. So I rented a U-Haul and I brought them in, uh, or I brought them back home. And we set them up in the game room. I think it's a good way to sort of cut the room into two different halves. Give us a little bit more uh, room to work with. More shelving, things like that. And then now we're standing on the edge of the shelf. So you see there's the door that we were looking at. We've got our Build-A-Bear Bowser. And on this top shelf we have the Eco Standee. This is one of my favorite pieces of merch that I have. Eco is another one of my all-time favorite games. I guess keep track of the number of times that I say that. You'll get a pretty good, pretty good sense of what games I really love. But this is such a cool display standee. I remember seeing this on store shelves when Eco came out. So it was awesome to finally get one for myself. And this is kind of like a cardboard cutout pop-out style. One of my favorite things in the collection. Below this, two other very cool things. These are like diorama box uh, paper craft deals. And so we have one for Mega Man. And then one for Chrono Trigger. And if you look, they are you know individual cuts of paper that are sort of displayed to make a diorama. Uh, it's especially noticeable on this one, right? Like you can see all the little individual working pieces. And then they create these really cool game scenes. So, hey. All right, so then backing up on this shelf, we have the PlayStation 5 collection as it stands so far. Not a huge collection yet, but I am quite enjoying my PlayStation 5. Uh, I also play my Series X a fair amount this generation too, so things are a little bit more even. Although, <laughs> funny enough, Series X has just become my Game Pass machine, so all my physical media is on PS5. But some great games released for the system so far, and uh, a lot of cool stuff that is yet to come out too, so uh, definitely, definitely enjoying PS5. Although, am I the only one that wishes that these cases weren't blue? I think it would have looked much classier if those were white or black cases, but I guess they wanted to keep using the PS4 ones. My one PS5 game that can't fit, poor Yakuza. Another great game. And then this shelf is just some extra stuff from uh, basically systems that I use to stream. So this is the Retron because I was recently streaming over on my Twitch page some Guardian Legend. Uh, that was a really great game. And I should mention I'm always streaming games from around my collection. I'm always trying to work through and beat all the games that I own. So definitely come hang out in the stream if you want to see 
uh, more from the game room, more of these games, and you want to just talk about uh, games or game collecting, I'd be happy to have you. Some controllers. PS3 from when I was doing some streaming of uh, Eco. I do some speed runs of Eco, and we just have an extra PS2 down there. So this is sort of just like my temporary <laughs> storage shelf for systems that I need to get out of the way. And now I will turn you around and we will take a look at the PS4 stuff. All right, coming around this corner, PlayStation 4. PlayStation 4 is definitely one of my biggest collections, uh, and there's still a ton of stuff that I want to pick up on it. The PS4 reminds me of the PS2 in that it just seems like a bottomless treasure trove of cool stuff to collect. Before we get down to the games, I'll show you what we have up here. This little like PlayStation sign, and then <laughs> this cool... This came, remember when I said that the shelf was from a rental store? This came with it. Uh, Midweek special, get one dollar movies. And so I think that's just like a neat little additional thing that sits up there. But I keep it mostly because if I ever get a shelf tucker display for a console, I'll have the thing to slide it right into, which is cool. All right. PS4. So starting right out the gate, 13 Sentinels, one of my all-time favorite games on PS4. Just a phenomenal uh, visual novel. Does some very interesting things with the story. Uh, we love Abzu, which I'm losing. There it is, Abzu. Another game, just very chill, underwater exploration game. I feel like games like Journey, which I really do. And yeah. As we scroll through here, there's just like just seemingly no end to the, the cool stuff on PS4. Bloodborne, an obvious classic. I actually just went back recently and got the Platinum Trophy on that, so it felt pretty good. This game that you can't uh, really see what it is, that is the Catherine Full Body Steelbook. I wish that it had the name on the, game, on the spine, but it doesn't, and the Collector's Edition only came with the Steelbook. I actually prefer original cases to steelbooks, but what can you do? Control, another great game. A game that I need to get the PS5 version of, but I have not yet uh, picked that up. A lot of neat, interesting things. Deliver Us the Moon. This game is like a very interesting, sort of like almost kind of a walking sim, but a little bit of puzzle in there too takes place in space oh sorry about that very good game dj max respect is a rhythm game i really like you know dragon quest 11 one of the best rpgs of all time yeah just just tons of cool stuff here and like i said crazy to me that i only have just a small percentage of what i actually want for this console uh kind of reach to show you that and then we'll go down over here so this is just some games that i have not yet had a chance to put on the shelf more recent pickups or things that i was playing stuff like that mostly pickups and then we start Again, oh, really cool game, Hyperlite Drifter. Uh, I was very happy that they released a physical version of that. Jedi Fallen Order, this is another one that I need to get the PS5 version of. Last Guardian, this is the um, this is the steelbook from the Collector's Edition, which you'll see the statue for later. Uh, one of my favorite PS4 games ever. You know, I'm such a big fan of Eco and Shadow of the Colossus and Last Guardian. I think that all that uh, studios games are great. Lumo is actually pretty fun. This is not PS4 exclusive, but if you've ever played, what's it called, Solstice on the NES, this is a fun little arcade game. I, I liked it, and I've never heard anyone talk about it. Seems like time has forgotten it. <laughs> the Nino Kuni remasters are great on PS4. And there's a lot of stuff. Overcooked, I love both of these games. Overcooked 1 and Overcooked 2. Play both of those with my partner. She and I have a blast with them. Persona 5, I am ashamed to admit that this is still sealed. I have not played Persona 5 yet. Ask me my Persona 5 story someday on stream and I'll tell you 
if I haven't already. My trauma involving deleting a save file in the original game. Not great. And just sort of scroll to the end here. We're at the extent of my arm's reach, so kind of get what you can there. All right, moving on down. And I should move this chair out of the way too, so I can hopefully get a better view. And start on shelf number three. Yeah, very, I don't have time to go into the whole story, but a weird one for the collection. Tamashi? It's like a horror indie game that was released under very strange circumstances. Uh, look that one up if you can. Maybe I'll make a video on that sometime too, because it's it's an odd one. <laughs> Very strange. Just scroll to give you a sense of everything that's here. Oh, I love the Yakuza games. Played Kiwami 1 and 2 back to back and loved both of them. And then we get into some special editions here. Actually, these are like Play Asia releases. Uh, that they did. I was a little more into collecting these when they first came out. I have since sort of fallen off because there's just so many of them that come out now. But this is either some of the earliest ones or like some shoot 'em ups that I wanted. And then we'll get into everything after those is VR games. You can tell most of them have the VR tag on the spine, but this is most of my VR collection. For a while, I sort of entertained the idea of going for a full physical VR set across all regions, but that quickly became very unmanageable. There's just so many games that have come out, so no longer going for that. But in the meantime, I've picked up a lot of cool VR stuff. You know, my favorite VR games, uh, being PlayStation VR that is, which is the only VR I have, Tetris Effect, Astrobot Rescue Mission and Beat Saber would probably be my favorites. And then we move into PlayStation 3. So, uh, PS3 was not my default system that gen. I played more on the 360, at least in the first half of that uh, console life cycle, but Later on, I switched more to PlayStation, and now I would say I play PS3 much more than 360. I think that they're both great systems, but PS3 really did come into its own. People will remember if they were there that early on, PS3 was struggling. It did not have many games, but it feels like once, kind of once Uncharted came out, then things really turned around for, for PlayStation. And... But again, a phenomenal system. I really have no complaints. History aside, just a lot of cool stuff. Magus, the, the best game on the PS3. If you know, you know. Magus is where it's at. Uh, the original Nier, this is a game that uh, I has I can't say enough good things about. One of the best soundtracks of all time. Blew me away when I first played that. Now much more popular, obviously, but I uh, love that game. Portal 2 was great. Puppeteer is fun. Gosh, so many good games. Tales of games. Which are for some reason a little out of order. I don't know why it goes Zillia 2, Graces, Chronicles, Zillia, but... That's my own fault for not checking before we uh, started recording, huh? And then ends at the Yakuza's. So what we have next is, that's my retro tank. That's how I stream all my consoles. And then this Annapurna Interactive like Collector's Limited Edition is a bundle of a bunch of Annapurna published games in one sort of compendium. Really cool special edition. Has like a nice holofoil cover that you can kind of see. Next to it is the Outer Wilds Collector's Edition, which is one of my all-time favorite games ever. And then there's some games that you can't really see from this angle, but I will stop and take you a little closer to so we can talk about them for a quick sec. All right, we're much lower now, probably different acoustics, but this is my Nuon Zodiac 
and Gizmondo collections. So, new one is a DVD player game system. Zodiac is a Palm Pilot game system, and Gizmondo is just a very, very unknown but very cool handheld. And I'm actually pretty happy with my Gizmondo set. So, yeah, that's what these are. And then that will take us back out, which I can kind of do in one motion maybe, <clears throat> to the computer area. First off, we have this really awesome chrono print that I just need to get a frame for but have not gotten yet. But that is another gift from my partner. And then above sort of the computer station, we have this Game Boy Color Get Into It towel. Uh, again, another example of just using odd stuff as game decoration, or as game room decoration. This is a Dark Cloud 2 hanging mobile. Uh, just kind of stuck into the ceiling. Like that quite a bit. Right above the computer monitors are a Shadow of the Colossus clock, which is really awesome. And then this Hollow Knight print, which is so cool because... These are actually magnetic pins and you can move them around to sort of like create whatever battle scene you want. Love it. And then we have the computer desk. Yes, it is a <laughs> very humble computer desk. I do need to replace it. It's just an old glass table. But this is where all the streaming happens. It's also where I work. But um, on here, well, this is just like a cool painting that uh, I need to hang up. Love that. But this is sitting here because this is the um, video modded 3DS that I have. So you can see it has a little USB port for video out there. This is how I stream 3DS and DS games. Uh, I've been streaming those somewhat often lately. And actually, if we look down here, you can see the an original Xbox is sitting here because I've been playing some System Link, actually excellent Kai games with folks from the retro Twitch community. So... Uh, if you've never heard of Excellent Kai, it is a way to play Xbox games that are System Link compatible uh, online. It basically emulates Xbox Live, so you can play multiplayer across the country with folks. Very cool. Across the world, actually. And then my Analog Pocket, which is how I stream a lot of my handheld games. Uh, if you do not have an Analog Pocket, this is just such a cool um, handheld system. Really beautiful screen. I was streaming some Mega Man Extreme 2 recently, which is why that's in there. Yeah, my cable management's not good. But yeah, this is the computer setup. So uh, behind, right to the right of it here is where I have my, my loose NES cards. Uh, as you've noticed and will continue to notice, most of what I have in the game room is um, complete in a box. That's how I prefer to collect my stuff. But I still have some NES stuff that I need to get boxes for. And that's what this is. So these are my loose cards. A lot of these are ones that I had from childhood. You know, great games like TMNT 2. Who, who, who wouldn't love that? And then I will move this lamp, which is sort of blocking the way, so we can get a better look at the stuff on this shelf. All right, moving up. On top of here, I've got some more figures. We've got a Jinjo. You may have seen some other Jinjos as we've gone around the room. Uh, you know. If you're paying attention, you can probably spot all five in the collection as we go about this game room tour. Then up top we have just a lot of miscellaneous plushes and displays and stuff. Uh, more uh, like uh, Persona figures, we got a Donkey Kong, the Hollow Knight Collector's Edition on Switch. Again, another game that I really love. Hollow Knight is amazing. In here we've got, you know, like a Bowser, this cool little Grease figure. This awesome Golden Sun Dark Dawn cardboard standee for the DS. Some Donkey Kong, Tails, Pikmin. Back there, it's kind of hard to tell, but there's like an Xbox sign that has just gotten buried by other merch at some point. And then just some figures and Catherine and stuff right there. But moving down, we get to my complete in-box NES games. So, up here is most of them. But they are kind of split up because I don't quite have the shelf space for everything. But man, love, love, love the NES. Even though I didn't grow up with it, I think that there are just a ton of cool games on it. You know, obviously, everyone's favorite game, Kiwi Craze. <laughs> this is actually a game I did 
grow up with and I love quite a bit. Uh, happy to have that one complete. But yeah, you know, can't argue with Legend of Zelda. Little Nemo, that's one that I played a lot growing up. Mike Tyson's Punch-Out. Never played Metroid growing up. Kind of wish I had, but yeah, just a ton of cool games. And uh, someday I hope that I can get those other loose carts with their boxes as well. I'm working on it slowly. And then we move down to Game Boy, Game Boy Color, and Game Boy Advance. Starting with the original Game Boy, uh, this is one of my favorite systems to collect for. I think that there's just so many cool games on the original Game Boy and on Game Boy Color. And yeah, there's just a ton more that I'd like to pick up, but I'm happy with what I do have. My first handheld ever was actually a Game Boy Color, so a lot of these Game Boy games I did not play at the time. But I have since gone back and played and quite enjoyed them. Mole Mania, if you've never played this game, this is a phenomenal puzzle game on the original Game Boy, one of the best. I'm actually a bit of a Metroid 2 defender. You know, happy to have my original copies of Pokemon. Gonna have Tetris. Moving down, I got some Wario Land. Bomberman Quest is a really cool one. The Dragon Warriors. I just played Dragon Warrior 2 not too long ago. Really good RPG. Really good port of it too, I think. Oh, Oracle Ages and Seasons. So uh, my family used to go on road trips when I was, you know, you know, probably the ages like between ages like nine and fifteen, something like that. And every year my family would buy me um, one or two Game Boy, Game Boy Color games. And the rule was I could not open them until we got on the road. The idea was they would be what would ent entertain me as I was in the back seat of my, of our very long cross country road trips. And so I have just so many good memories of playing Oracle of Ages and Oracle of Seasons that way, uh, Mario Golf that way, Metal Gear Solid. A lot of people call this Metal Gear Solid Ghost Babble. Played this that way back then. Really, really great game. Yeah, just, I love the Game Boy. The entire Game Boy family. I'm, I'm a big handheld game fan. I, I tend to prefer handhelds in a lot of ways. So, that Rugrats movie game is one I had from my youth. <laughs> yeah, just a lot of cool stuff. Getting into Game Boy Advance now. With hits like Grunty's Revenge. Loved playing through the Castlevania games back in the day. Move on down here to Fire Emblems, another set. Oh, Golden Sun. Some of my favorite RPGs ever, Golden Sun. Love them. The music and the visuals blew me away back in the day. If you were there playing Golden Sun back when it was relevant, you remember. Klonoa games. Uh, very good puzzle platformers on GBA. I love Klonoa as a series. Minish Cap is one of my all-time favorites. Yeah, Got our Metroids back there. Tons of cool stuff on Game Boy. Some very, very fun, very collectible games. And then, of course, we've got our little robot buddy from Nier protecting us at the very end. And then, these shelves are kind of strange. First off, we have this, which is mostly Vita stuff. Like Vita, Big Box Editions, uh, Cosmic Star Heroines, Spelunky, things like that. But the game I took out is the Game Boy Color Dance Dance Revolution set. So you play Dance Dance Revolution with this little plastic dance mat. So cool. Love this thing. Very, very fun. And then moving to the right of that is the NES games that can't fit up with the other ones. So this rounds out the NES set that uh, I have. Including, like I said, Guardian Legend, which is a great game and one that I just streamed. Atari 2600. I don't really do much Atari, although a lot of these just came from a friend of mine gifted me his childhood Atari collection because he knows that I collect uh, video games and so that was very sweet of him 
very meaningful to me. And so a lot of those actually do uh, have a lot of good memories associated to them because of that. <laughs> Down here, the system that you'll be able to see the least of all of them, and I apologize, you're just going to have to kind of get this weird angled shot. This is my Dreamcast set. There's just not a good spot for it anywhere. So you can see what you can. Feel free to ask me what I have on Dreamcast because it's hard for me to capture it. But uh, I like the Dreamcast. A lot of that came from I bought a Dreamcast off of my friend, you know, back in probably 2004. Uh, and it came with Shenmue, Sonic Adventure, D2, Power Stone, and you know, probably half those games. And so that's where uh, most of my memories of Dreamcast come from. Power Stone being maybe my favorite game on the console. This is a PlayStation light-up sign that usually goes on a kiosk. And then just some special editions, some boxes for some figures from Banjo-Kazooie and a couple more indie box games. Here. Whoop. Good luck. And then we move over to the next shelf here, which at the top has the Trupal King from Shovel Knight wearing a pair of homemade Trico ears. Done by my good friend Sancho Panda. Thank you, Sancho. And then we have the Vectrex, which is a system I quite enjoy and gets a decent amount of playtime. Then down below that are most of my gaming soundtracks. So some of these have been purchased, you know, just direct from various places. Some of these came from special editions, but I have some good ones. You know, some Dragon Warrior, some Fantasy Star. Uh, some other RPG soundtracks, Splatoon soundtracks, East soundtracks, Final Fantasy soundtracks. I have a tradition of every time I go to a Distant Worlds concert, I tend to buy uh, one of the official Final Fantasy soundtracks that they sell there. So I have accumulated a good amount of them that way. This is a really cool cardboard standee for Rhythm Heaven. Uh, it actually does make music when you uh, have batteries in it, but I don't right now, unfortunately. And then below that, it is guarding my 3DO collection, which spans these games here. And then there's some more right on the shelf next to it by this Tonberry with some Famicom games resting on top of that. All right, and then we will take a look at this next shelf here in just a moment. All right, before I do that, should show you the Atari Jaguar banner. It's a little bit blocked by the curtains, but that's a large vinyl store display banner that I have. Very cool. And then on top of the shelf is a Sonic from the Sonic Mania Collector's Edition and a Backlog Plush. And mine, I believe, still does have working sound. Let's test. Gives you a little book, book, book. That is the mascot of Backloggery.com, which is the greatest website on the internet. That's where I have been tracking my game collection for years and all the games that I have finished. This is like a washcloth that I think was a Nintendo reward. Which is in front of my complete in-box uh, Virtual Boy set. So this is all licensed North American Virtual Boy games, including the very hard to come by box for Mario Tennis. And, of course, uh, Jack Bros, which is an actually, it is a really great game. So it's a shame that, um, that that is hard to come by because it's a lot of fun. But yeah, I have the full complete box set, which is awesome. I actually really like the Virtual Boy. I think the Virtual Boy, almost every game on it is fun. And if you play it in the right context and in the right headspace, it is, it is really cool. Next up is Saturn. Uh, we have some great RPGs on the Saturn. Uh, for anyone asking if you're not aware, this one with no spine, this is a stall. For some reason, they just don't have the name on the spine. But I love Bug. I had a lot of fun with that one. Galactic Attack is a very fun shoot 'em up. Magic Knight Ray Earth was a lot of fun. Mac Warrior, Mr. Bones. <laughs> I streamed all of Shining Wisdom, which was very fun. Uh, same with Sonic R. So yeah, I, I quite enjoy the Saturn, even if pickups are slow to come by. And then we get to Sega CD, which has some of the coolest cases of any system, I think. 
Love these blue cases. But yeah. A lot of cool games on Sega CD. And a couple of the cardboard box ones, including Time Gal. If you've never played Time Gal, it's a, it's a short and easy but very fun Dragon's Lair style game. You know, just one of those sort of QTE-based games where you have to press the right direction uh, to avoid traps or, or monsters, things like that. But I, I really liked it. And then my one CDI game, <laughs> I don't have a CDI, but uh, I couldn't... I couldn't say no when I found that at a thrift store in the CD section, so who knows? Maybe we'll accidentally thrift an entire CDI set somehow. And then we just get down to the uh, stuff that we already looked at, so. We will now move up and over again, which leads us to handheld stuff. Starting with 3D... Well, handheld. Which leads us to the DS family of handhelds, I should say. Starting with 3DS. A lot of cool 3DS games. I've been really enjoying collecting for this lately. Um, I think it sort of has been getting a little bit more attention now that the eShop has closed. But I've always loved the 3DS. I, I like the white cases. And yeah, I just have a lot of good memories playing the system. Tons of RPGs on this thing. Some good platformers. Like, there's a little something for everyone on the on the 3DS. No shortage of Mario games, that's for dang sure. I actually really liked Samus, uh, where did it go? Metroid, Samus Returns. Very good. Nano Assault is like a cool twin stick shooter. I love Pilot Wings Resort. I played this game actually uh, years after it came out because I did not get it, I didn't get a 3DS right at launch and so I missed it as a launch game. But I played it a couple of years ago and what a relaxing game. Very colorful, very bright, just puts you in a good mood. Don't sleep on Pilot Wings Resort. Some more cool stuff. Get into the RPGs, all the Shin Megami Tensei games. And apologies if in some cases I'm going a little too fast. You can always pause it or slow the video down to see what it is that you want to see. And we get to the last of the 3DS stuff here with some big box games. Oh, Theater Rhythm. This has got to be one of my favorite um, favorite games on the 3DS. Love Rhythm games, and Theater Rhythm was a ton of fun. Etrian and Odyssey games are great, too. Then we get into DS, the original DS, which is my favorite handheld of all time. It just, I think, has an absolutely untouchable library. Basically, every game is represented. It's massive. There's tons of stuff to find. Uh, like, you know, stuff that is sort of buried beneath the surface. Great entries in popular franchises. It's just, uh, it's kind of hit after hit, really. You know, Advance Wars Dual Strike is one of the first games on DS I get really, really addicted to. The B game? I know y'all like the B game. And now you might see some stuff, you know, I should go back to this. I made a joke, but the B game. You might see some stuff like this and you think, I thought you only collected stuff that you want to play or that you enjoy. Well, something that uh, you may or may not know about me is I quite, I quite enjoy the process of trying to find the fun in most games that I play. And so sometimes there's games like this that uh, I bought thinking maybe they'd be better than they were. In the case of the B game, you know, it's... It's very kiddy. It's it's not too great, but we had a lot of fun streaming that, and so I, I hang onto the copy as a memory of the the fun we had streaming it. Like Dementium One and Two, like there are literally survival horror games on this thing. Got all the Dragon Quests. Oh, Rocket Slime. This is a next level game right here. One of my favorite Dragon Quest games ever, side uh, side series or main series, honestly. Oh, Elite Beat Agents, again, another one that I have played just a ridiculous amount of. Yeah, tons of stuff. Ghost Trick is one of the best, uh, sort of like... I guess puzzle adventure games I've ever played. 
some cool imports. Like, I'm not gonna remember the name of this. It's like uh, something no Navi, but this is literally like a star chart for your DS that uses the gyroscope to tell you um, like what constellations are in the sky. Like, come on, what kind of cool handheld has stuff like that? The DS truly is uh, one of a kind in that regard. Yeah, got uh, Zombie Barbecue, which is a pretty fun, uh, very collectible game. Oh, Mario Kart DS. I played so much Mario Kart DS with my friends back in college. Just an absurd amount. I uh, love that game. One of my favorite Mario Karts, if I'm being honest. Nano Strays, some scrolling shoot 'em ups. All the Phoenix Wright games. Of course, all the Pokemon games. Pokemon Pearl being the first one that I really. Like, I grew up on Pokemon, right? I played every generation, but Pearl was the first one where I. Uh, and kind of the last one where I got super into EV training and like building an optimal team and stuff like that. Fourth and fifth gen are the only ones where I ever really did that. <laughs> Radiant Historia, one of the best RPGs you can get on any system. Very cool battle system. Rhythm Heaven. Uh, if you've never seen this, this is like Slide Adventure, I think it's called. It's a game that you like slide your DS around on the ground and uh, play the game that way. It has like an attachment. That's why it has a big box. Yeah, so cool. There we go up here. If we go up, we get to the last of the DS games. And then this right here, just a couple more. World Ends With You, oh, classic game, classic game. And the big game, big box Pokemon's Dark Spire, a game with an incredible soundtrack, might I add. Then down below that, we have this adorable little mage postcard that is blocking my Atari Lynx games, or some of them. Including Zaku, which is a scrolling shoot 'em up. Unfortunately, my Lynx has a little bit of, um, what is it, uh, like pixel bleed, screen bleed. The capacitors are starting to go. So, thankfully, the analog pocket is going to re be releasing an adapter that I can play Lynx stuff on. A little keychain from Dagger from Final Fantasy IX, which is my favorite Final Fantasy. Here's my Turbo Graphics 16 collection. With some miscellaneous figures right next to it. This is the rest of my Lynx collection. And then down here we have Tiger Gamecom. Everyone's favorite system. I actually quite enjoy it. And finally we have the Atari Jaguar. Very cool. Next to this here is one of my favorite things in the collection. This is like a, a light-up Nintendo DS display sign. It's not lit up right now. I'm looking to find space on the wall where I can hang it up and have it constantly lit because I think it is just so cool. Crash Bandicoot agrees. He says, yeah, man, I think it's great. I'm a big fan. So, love that. Above that is this Dark Souls uh, print. This is the entire world of Dark Souls. Beautiful, beautiful print. Another one I probably should get a frame for. Then above that, kind of behind the shelf where the DS games were, is the Sega CD complete in box. Got a Moogle. Elvis from Perfect Dark, because of course we do. Some Metroid Mebos. A complete in box Super Nintendo. On top of the shelf is my Virtual Boy. And... The Smash Bros. Champion belt being guarded, or being wrapped around a Marlboro from Final Fantasy. Then a Donkey Kong Country poster back there, and then a vinyl Super Mario Sunshine store display behind that. That is the type of store display that was inside of, like, a, a video rental store that they put in the window. Alright, next up here we have PlayStation 2. So, PlayStation 2... 
my biggest collection and my favorite console. Just, again, a massive diversity of games. There's so much to love on the PlayStation 2. Again, there's way too many to, to stop and talk about all the ones I love, so you'll have to just kind of get a sense for my taste and my style based on what I have. I do have all the DDR games because I am a man of culture. Dark Cloud, the original Dark Cloud is one of my all-time favorites. Dragon the Ancient Gates, a game I actually have a lot of memories with, and not as bad as you'd think. It's actually pretty good. Got that Final Fantasies, Guitar Room Man. Grandia 2. PlayStation 2 is the first time I ever played Grandia 2. Now one of my favorite RPGs. Guilty Gear X2, the only fighting game I ever got really into. Ah, oh, Eco. I mean, do we need to pull it out? Probably not, but you can see my well-loved copy of Eco because that's my original copy. Love that game. Klonoa 2 is really great. Yeah, so much stuff. And despite all this, there's still tons more on PlayStation 2 I'd like to pick up. It's just never-ending. Rez, one of my all-time favorites, blew me away back in the day. So unique. Oh, the Shadow Hearts series. Now, this is an RPG series that absolutely needs to make a comeback. Uh, I especially like the first Shadow Hearts game. This is one of my favorite RPGs ever. Really cool battle system, very unique tone. Um, great soundtrack, just nothing, nothing else like it out there, and uh, I'm surprised it hasn't seen a resurgence in some way. I wouldn't be surprised if someday we do get a Shadow Hearts, either a trilogy or a, you know, an HD up res of one of the games. So Coden 3 is another one of my all-time favorite RPGs. And then this very, very cool Golden Sun Lost Age cardboard standee is blocking some of the PS2 games, so we're just going to ask that to move so you can get a sense of what's back here. Yeah, a lot of cool stuff. And then at the very end here we have my import PS2 games. I can't pull them all out and show them to you, unfortunately, but... Uh, there's actually a massive and very cool import library on the PS2, so um, I only have a small handful of what I'm looking for there, but gosh, there's a lot of cool stuff. You know Shantae hiding back there. Now below that we have some more Amiibo sitting on this shelf, a Riku from Final Fantasy X, the Golden Sun standee. Some more Amiibo, and the Pokemon Teaches Typing Special Edition, which is a, t a typing game that has a keyboard attachment for the DS, where you type in Mavis Beacon Teaches Typing Style to uh, catch Pokemon. Really awesome. And then we get to my PS1 games. Now this is a library that is almost untouchable. Talk about an RPG powerhouse, you know... Some of my all-time favorite games ever, like Chrono Cross. Truly love that game. There's tons of good survival horror on PS1. And just a huge variety of, like, odd, off-the-beaten-path stuff. You know, like, if you know, you know Toy Story 2 is really good. But you might not, just by looking at it. Final Fantasy IX being my favorite Final Fantasy, as I mentioned. I'll scroll down to the next shelf. And, man, I remember uh, this was the second system this generation. I got an N64 first, but I remember getting the PS1 and thinking, like, oh, my gosh, games are so much bigger than I realized. So much more potential in, like, storytelling, world, everything. Legend of Dragoon, another one of my favorites from my early days. I played a ton of that game. Omega Boost is a lot of fun. This is a really fun... If you're ever in the mood for a Halloween 3D platformer, check out Muppet Monster Adventure. This is like a... Yeah, bit, bit of an unknown classic, I think. Very cool. Reminds me a lot of like a Spyro.
tons of weird stuff. Here we are, Resident Evil 2. This is the first game I ever got for my PS1. I got it back on launch. Got a cracked case and everything, but that's okay because, man, did I go crazy for that. I'd never even played the first Resident Evil when I got it, but I, went, I had to go back and play it after that because I was hooked. Yeah. So many platformers and all sorts of things. Um, um Jam or Lammy is a great game. And then as we get to this bottom shelf here, you know, we get the last of the PlayStation games and then import PS1. Even better than import PS2, I think, is import PS1. Tons of cool stuff. And again, I can't show all these to you, so you'll have to just trust me that they're awesome. If you'd like to see like an import PS1 collection sometime, uh, let me know. I'd happy to be happy to put up a video of that. Um, I also stream some of those sometimes. Got our import Super CD-ROM games. Import Sega Saturn games. And then some of the PS1 big boxes like Lunar, Lunar 2, Ark the Lad, stuff like that. And then on the very bottom shelf here, we've got... My Neo Geo Pocket Color collection. Next to a stack of Xbox demo discs, because this is just kind of where I had room for them. Uh, I really like playing around on demo discs and just seeing, you know, what slices of a game they showed off. Every now and again you find a game that never came out, stuff like that. And then below that, I have my N-Gage collection. I have about 65% of the N-Gage library. Uh, a lot of the games I want the most. Don't know that I'll ever go for the full set because there's just some really expensive games at the top that I'm not looking to pay for. Uh, we have our long box PS1 games. And then I will uh, now take a look at this shelf with you. All right, so this shelf has a lot of interesting things on it. We've got more Jinjo. This is a Metroid Prime uh like countertop standee so this is the 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 source of these samus cardboard uh display standees that i was talking about so there's supposed to be one on each corner but they obviously wouldn't fit that way and they were kind of just being pushed against the wall for no reason so i have two of them taken off and put in other places in the game room and i have the one that faces forward out i think that is just so cool Oh, this really awesome Bouncer and Final Fantasy IX lenticular display. I'm actually happy to have both. I love both Final Fantasy IX and the Bouncer. And then on here we've got a little Mario flying around, uh, an Annapurna box set, and a Strawby plush from Bug Snacks. And they're on an original Zelda placemat underneath there. And then these drawers, I mean, this just has a bunch of cords in it, and... This bottom drawer is where I keep all of my handhelds. So all, you know, everything from Game Boy SPs, 3DSs, Vitas, Neo Geo Pocket Colors, everything like that. Links, it all goes in there. And then we get to... Do, 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 original Xbox. Oh. I like the original Xbox. It was the last of the three consoles this generation that I got, but tons of good stuff on it. Uh, I played mostly Halo, if I'm being honest, back in the day. But, you know, I also played a lot of Panzer, Dragoon Orta, Knights of the Old Republic, Jet Set Radio. So even though my multiplayer time was mostly Halo and one other game that I'll talk about, my single player time was spent on some classics, I think. Let me get down here. Oh, Ninja Gaiden. I remember playing so much of that. Otogi. Uh, I liked those games. Like I mentioned, Panzer Dragoon Orta. This is one of my favorite rail shooters ever. What else we got here? Oh. Get to some of my all-time favorites ever, uh, especially this guy right here. Where is he? Where is he hiding? Tom Clancy's Splinter Cell Pandora Tomorrow. I played so much of this game online. Me and my friend were ridiculously good at it. 
Uh, I'll tell the story someday, but we were we were pretty highly ranked in that game, actually. One of the first, if not the first, like Xbox Live games that I felt I was almost competitive at. <laughs> then we move into 360. And again, 360, another system where I just just adore it. I sat out, or I sat out at Best Buy in the cold to get this one as well. I actually wasn't originally planning to get a 360. I think I told the story before, but uh, I was going to get one, but not at launch. And a buddy of mine called me at 10 at night the night before and said, Hey man, I'm going to go to Best Buy and stand outside and get an Xbox 360. Do you want to come with? And I was like, sure. <laughs> I didn't, didn't think it through, headed out the door. I grabbed a jacket, but I didn't grab a hat. I didn't grab gloves. And it is, you know, November... 20 something and it is winter in minnesota so i probably should have planned ahead froze myself to a popsicle but we got the 360 i remember going home popping in uh first off i played hexic hd but then we played you know the all-time classic perfect dark zero and condemned was the other one that i that i bought at launch rock band 2 uh, that is one that I have spent a lot of time on. Was really addicted to score hunting in Rock Band 2. And then we get to GameCube. Uh, of the three, this generation, my smallest library, but that's not for, you know, lack of quality. There's nothing but good stuff here. So, you know, Eternal Darkness, Donkey Konga. I'm a, I'm a uh, champion of Donkey Konga. I can tell you that story sometime, too. Loved Wind Waker. Luigi's Mansion, an all-time favorite of mine. Metroid Prime, I think, is one of the best games ever made. Easily my favorite Metroid game. Probably in my top games ever. So much cool stuff. Klonoa, yet another standee that's blocking some games, but we'll move that. So you can see the last ones there. And then this little thing, if I can show it to you. Um, this is like a McDonald's character strap set that has some PlayStation 1 characters in it. I just think that's so cool. I want to hang that up somewhere. And that brings us to this shelf where, you know, first of all, we have this awesome Klonoa 2 cardboard countertop standee. This is another pop-out one like the Eco one. You can tell it's kind of popped out there on his ear. The GameCube, some Undertale figures. This is the Resident Evil GameStop Special Edition. Bullet Bill. Journey character. Journey's one of my favorite games, too. And How to Beat Volume 1. Ugh, more backloggery. Greatest website on the internet. And that'll bring us down to the first shelf here, which is a lot of Banjo-Kazooie merch. My little Banjo shrine. You know, with my, with my Journey hanging out in there too but love banjo kazooie love 3d platformers in general then behind this plushie we have all these really cool wooden carved um nes controllers i forget the name of the studio that does these but they um, in the shape of a controller do these very beautiful very intricate um like wood burned uh, art pictures so i have a zelda one a metroid one contra and mega man some more plushies and figures gotta have the chow gotta have lucky hanging out and bug of course and then i won't scroll through all of these but this is my nintendo power collection it's a lot of them between like the n64 era and late wii um that's the era where i had the magazine but then also i had a friend that gave me a lot of his collection at some point so i have those as well and then we get down into the other half of my uh like strategy guides and art books and things so i've got a couple different strategy guides miscellaneous art books you know sega genesis power tips ocarina of time strategy guide all sorts of cool stuff there 
And we've got some Kirby's. Got the Taiko no Tatsujin drum. Because you gotta have your rhythm game utensils. And the Wario Bros. Wario and Waluigi hanging out back there. Just doing their thing. Alright. Now I'll bring you up and we'll take a look at the third shelf along this wall. Alright. Now this last shelf is PSP, Super Nintendo, and a couple other things. PSP is a system that I'm really finding myself very nostalgic for these days. A lot of great games on PSP. Kind of the last disconnected handheld. Um, you know, before everything was always online all the time. Online play was novel, you know, play things like SOCOM online, but other than that, not, uh, not too much. And, and I liked it that way, honestly. I mean, I love playing stuff online, but I liked the simplicity, kind of the last, last stand of simplicity that PSP represented. Plus, gosh, so many good RPGs on this thing. Prinny was a really good action platformer. Just tons of cool stuff. And, you know, can't go wrong with those East games. A little Jinjo hanging out. Then this is my complete box Game Gear games. Not easy to come by boxes for Game Gear stuff, so I'm, I'm pretty happy with the collection I have. Still some games I'd like to get, uh, but I have the ones I care the most about. I never had a Game Gear, but my neighbor had a Game Gear. And so I played his, we played Sonic 2 a lot at his house. And then we move on to, yes... My Super Nintendo games are vertical. That's just kind of how the shelf works for me. I know. I know. But yeah, Super Nintendo is incredible. Final Fantasy III, one of my all-time favorite RPGs. You know, Chrono Trigger, one of my all-time favorite RPGs. A lot of my all-time favorite RPGs are on Super Nintendo. Probably not a coincidence. Kid Clown and Crazy Chase. This is a game that I actually played a lot uh, as a kid. My my uncle had that game, and so I would go, I would hang out with my cousins, and I would play that at their house. You know, Legend of Zelda, Lufia, Mega Man X is dang near a perfect game. <laughs> so good. Secret of Mana. What can you say, right? Gosh. Just shouting their names out because they're all so dang good. A game I played more recently for the first time, Soul Blazer. Phenomenal action RPG. Just wow, so good. Super Ghouls and Ghosts is one of my favorites growing up. Super Mario World. Happy to have a like a complete copy of this. This is um, one, of my, one of my partner's favorite games. I like it too a lot, but I'm bad. I'm bad at Super Mario World. Not good. Super Metroid, my favorite 2D Metroid. Um, Super Punch-Out, my favorite Punch-Out game. Spike McFang is very cool. Yeah, there's just a lot of awesome stuff on Super Nintendo. And then we get to my Super Famicom. Not too many games, but, you know, and always, always an opportunity to grow that one. A little Steins Gate figure for you. Then on this next shelf down here is Vectrex, my uh, Vectrex games. They all have their overlays, which is awesome. Uh, basically every game on the Vectrex is fun. You really can't go wrong. And I love those big gray boxes. They're so, they're so 80s, right? They're so of the era. Then we have the big box Mario paint for that mouse pad. Some more figures and a Mario Kart 64 pencil case and a Chrono Cross clock. And then my complete in box Earthbound. And then we move down to the next shelf. We have some Kirby figures. We have another lenticular display. This is uh, this is for Jack Two. You can tell I like lenticular stuff, right? I think that lenticular displays are so cool. I like that. Depending on what part of the room you're standing in, it looks different. I actually would prefer to have a Jack 1 display, but Jack and Dexter 1 promotional merchandise is just not easy to come by. So Jack 2 will serve the need for now, but Jack 1 is by far my favorite Jack and Dexter game. 
This is the Japanese Super Mario Advance uh, countertop display. It's like double-sided. Little Banjo-Kazooie pencil case. Some other plushies, some more Kirby stuff. There's one of those Samus figures and Mario. The Mario DS holder. <laughs> then this Nintendo 64 shelf talker protects the N64 games. So... N64, one of my most nostalgic systems. Really love this. I should move here. I should move this. This isn't just a golf ball and golf tee. If you look, it says Nintendo on there, and you probably can't see at the top, but it is. Um, these are Mario Golf themed, so that is technically a promotional display. But yeah, N64, probably my most nostalgic system. I played a ton of this growing up my friend and i met talking about donkey kong 64 one of my best friends in the world uh yeah so donkey kong 64 i love that love diddy kong racing i actually really like bomberman i don't know why goldeneye is uh facing the wrong way out obviously i choose to display the blue side out but you never know i guess i'm just trying to mess with people's heads zelda Mario Kart 64. So many stories I could tell that I just don't have time to right now, but uh, I can go into those in other episodes. Let me move down. Paper Mario. Oh, Perfect Dark. An all-time classic. Pokemon Snap. Yeah, tons of good stuff. Starcraft 64, not the best version of Starcraft. I do not recommend it. <laughs> I do, however, recommend Mario 64. Let me be the first person to recommend you that game. And then we have a lot of my um, indie boxes. So the Hollow Knight one, Super Meat Boy, Invisible Ink, and then there's just a ton more down here. You know. Axiom Verge, Dust. A lot of these games since have gotten, you know, Switch releases or limited run releases. There are physical versions of these in most cases now. But at the time, this was the only way to get physical versions of a lot of these games. And it was really cool. And like I mentioned, a lot of these are sealed because uh, they came with Steam codes. Yeah. Miss that company. And then we will back up here and I will show you this closet. <laughs> We're not going to go in the closet. It's very messy in there. I did not prepare it for the video. <laughs> but it is, uh, it's basically just where I keep extra overflow systems and stuff, you know, where I keep um, stuff for sale or trade, things like that. But above the closet is this awesome set of Mario, um, like, banners, flag banners with some earthbound figures below that. And then, you know, on the handles, we have uh, the old Sonic the Hedgehog plush and some bags and things like that. And then we will now take a look at this display case. But before we do, let's take a look at this awesome 360 launch game display banner. Love that. All right, let's take a look at the display case. All right, so on top of the display case, first off, we have this really great Final Fantasy IX display with some Earthbound figures above that. Around the corner, there's a VV and some Cuphead figures and plushes back there. Above it is a Mario 64 whiteboard. And then we get into the actual display case. This is where I keep a lot of my, like, figures and stuff. Just some miscellaneous things that you want to keep relatively dust-free. So we have stuff from Odin Sphere. We've got uh, poor, uh, poor Link in Majora's Mask appears to have fallen over. Some Chrono Trigger. I love these Chrono Trigger, like, diorama figures. Some of my favorite figures in my entire collection. I feel very fortunate to have the full set. And Chrono Trigger um, keychains. Then down on the next shelf, we have <laughs> we have Trico from the collector's edition of Last Guardian, being surrounded by all sorts of figures from Final Fantasy IX, VIII, Final Fantasy III, 
Final Fantasy VII, all manners of Final Fantasy characters. And then in the very back, you can kind of see we have some of the Super Mario RPG keychains in there. Some of my favorite merchandise. Some of the only ways to get Geno and Mallow merchandise. Below that, we have just like a little Final Fantasy shelf, which is some of my VV plushes and Moogle plushes and a lot of these uh, Coca-Cola Final Fantasy figures. So I'm trying to give you a look at all these. These are really cool little mini figures. You usually find lots of them. And then I have some of those Final Fantasy IX diorama figures in there too. So cool. And the bottom shelf is we have a Trico plush. That was an E3 exclusive plush, I believe. So not too easy to come by. Some Undertale plushes. And then this is a very hard to come by Panzer Dragoon Orta figure. Really nice figure of her sitting next to the dragon's head. Very scary to ship this because you can tell it has this long piece that could snap very easily. So you're going to take great care with it. But uh, I really love this figure. And like I said earlier, Panzer Dragoon Orta is one of my favorite uh, original Xbox games. One of my favorite rail shooters ever. So I'm very, very happy to have that. And we'll go back up here, and that will bring us around the corner to my Sonic 3 Happy Meal store display. One of my favorite displays in the whole game room. I just have two Knuckles figures there because I happen to have an extra one. But yeah, this is from the Happy Meal toys for Sonic 3. So cool. Love, love, love it. Below that hit the door <laughs> below that is all my vita stuff so i collected pretty heavily on the vita for a couple reasons one i love this system i think it is a lot of fun uh, a lot of cool rpgs and stuff uh, by the way i have two breach and clears because i bought one from limited run when they first released it and then i won one in a contest uh, i had to take a picture of all my handheld games for all my consoles spread across my living room and said team handheld pretty cool but and back to what i was saying i think that the vita has a lot of cool games and a lot of different interesting genres it also was the start of limited run games which at the time i thought was such a novel and cool idea i still like limited run but i don't buy nearly as much as i once did probably hard to see some of these games move this undertale collector's edition and give you a shot of those uh underneath me is the gamecube floor mat that you see when you walk into the room behind me right now is the door so <laughs> make sure that you uh, wipe your feet as you enter right then we get to some more vita stuff Tons and tons of cool Vita games. So many indies that got physical releases. So many RPGs. So many visual novels. Just, just tons of unique stuff. And my last shelf of them there. And then down here is just some big box PC games. Mostly Warcraft stuff. So then we get to the most cramped part of the game room. Right here is just some like miscellaneous, mostly PS3 collector's editions. As we scroll up, you'll see a poor Mario who is being piggybacked by this cactar. Nice Dragon Warrior poster. And then a Dark Cloud 2 display standee. This is in the same advertising set as the, the mobile that we showed before. And Beautiful Joe. And then this is where I keep all the boxes for like my collector's editions and things like that. So there's just a, a lot of stuff crammed into not a lot of space. So if I move like this Pac-Man lunchbox, you can see tons of like Vita collector's editions that I have. And as we go through, there'll be PS4 ones, Switch ones, 3DS ones. There's just no way I can pull this out and show you all of them. So I have to take my word on it. I do like this Diddy Kong Racing tin though. This used to have a t-shirt in it. You can see some more of the special editions back there. 
Unfortunately, I just don't have a better way of displaying these right now. I need to, like I said, I'm kind of recording this because I'm planning on doing a bit of a rearrange of the game room and want to see the before and after. So I probably will show you all how it changes and what that looks like. And you can see more <laughs> PSP, PS3, all sorts of stuff. <laughs> I was much bigger into collector's editions in the PS3 era, PSP era, into like the Vita. I don't do so much collector's edition stuff anymore just because I feel like I don't have space. And um, a lot of times I'd rather put that money towards another game. But I get the appeal of them and I had a lot of fun um, buying a lot of them at the time. I'm definitely not opposed to them. All right, then we move up to what will be our final shelf that we're going to look at. Up here we have two more displays. Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles. This is another one that's battery operated. If you put batteries in the bottom, it will spin. And a uh, electric blue Nintendo DS. Launch DS display sign. So cool. Love that. Big cardboard Game Boy Advance SP display. And then we get down to my Switch games, which are tucked into this dark corner, but this is the only spot I have shelf room for them right now. So we'll try to get it where the glare is not too bad for you. These ones on the top just don't fit, and a lot of these were ones that I brought on like a recent business trip I took. So I'll show you what I can of the titles here. The Switch just seems like a never-ending system to collect stuff for. I actually, at this point, prefer uh, PS4 as sort of like my multi-platform console of choice, but there's no denying that there's tons of cool stuff on the, on the Switch. Oh, uh, that is Cinemora that's kind of blocked off there. Yeah, just a very quick shot of what we have here. In the middle shelf here we have some really cool special editions. The Messenger, Grease, two of my favorites on the system. Moon, very happy to have this. Really, really cool. Originally it was a PS1 RPG that is just very quirky, very odd. You play as someone who is following the hero of an RPG and like sort of cleaning up in their aftermath. Uh, very quirky, inspired games like Undertale and you can definitely tell. Here we have just some figures. Yeah, Moon is one of my favorite games that I played in the last couple years. Yeah, so many, so many Switch games. Sayonara Wild Hearts again. There's the Switch version of that. Love it, love it. And my bottom shelf here. And there we are. Let me give you a, a kind of a bigger view. And that brings us right back to where we were with the the main door here. So let me uh, give you one last final shot. So yeah, that'll do it. That concludes the tour. Pan out for you. Hopefully you enjoyed. If you saw anything cool that you liked or just want to know more about anything I have, talk about any of these collections, anything like that, uh, always feel free to reach out to me. I love talking about games with people. If you stuck all the way to the end of this, my gosh, thank you. Thank you so much. Really appreciate that. Um, I, uh, I stream on Twitch pretty regularly if you want to talk about these or see any of these games. And otherwise, I just appreciate you taking time out of your day to check it out. Hopefully it was interesting. And we will talk again in the next video.